Hello and welcome to this lecture and in this lecture we will be talking something about the list operations. So in the previous lecture we actually had an introduction to the lists. So now we will learn some basic operations which we could perform on lists. Now these tutorials may sound quite simple and it might sound a little bit boring but when you design complex web applications in Python these are the things which you will be needing as these are some fundamental and basic things and if you actually struggle with these things while designing a website then it would become extremely difficult so what I would recommend you is that you please pay close attention to these things while I'm explaining and make a note of the important things which I have mentioned in these lectures and also I will be providing you with notes at the end of each and every section so make sure that you have those notes printed out and have them on your desk at all time so even if you complete this course you will have those notes for reference so you could simply refer those notes and you could go ahead and use those concepts so let's go ahead and let's get started with list operations so even before learning list operations we need to have some sample list so let's go ahead and create that so let's type in numbers as the name of the list and let's save some random numbers like 1 1 1 and 1 in our list so the very first operation which we are going to learn is that how to basically insert some value into your list so as you could see now we only have all ones in our list which is numbers now let's say at a particular position you need to insert a value of 2 so this is the zeroth position the first and let's say at the second position you want to insert a value of 5 so in order to do that you simply type in numbers then specify the index position in square brackets which is nothing but the second position so we type numbers of 2 equals and then you need to specify the value which you want to have at the second position in the list numbers so as we have mentioned we want 5 so simply type in equals 5 now if we actually go ahead and print out the list in order to check if the value of 5 is actually stored at the second position we simply save the code and run the code so as you could see we are successful in storing the value of 5 at the second position in the list now if you want to actually save 5 at some different position you could simply mention the index at which you want to store that value or you could also change the value which you want to store by changing this value right here so this was one of the basic list operation now I also want to mention that you could actually go ahead and add lists so if you don't believe me let's go ahead and create a new list so let me just delete this code so we already have one list which is numbers now let's go ahead and create new list which is called as let's say new numbers and let's say we have some values like 2, 2, 2, 2 and 2 over here. Now in order to actually add up to list what we could do is that we could type in print and here you could type in numbers plus new numbers. So what this is going to essentially do is that it is going to add up these two number lists and it is going to print out the result for us. So if we go ahead and save the code and if we try to run this thing as you could see now the two lists are added now adding two lists essentially means that you will have one list and the next list is going to be joined to it so you could go ahead and add as many lists as you want in python by simply using the plus operator now one more thing which i would like to mention here is that you could actually go ahead and you could also multiply lists but you could not multiply one list with other instead you can multiply a list with a number so instead of having this plus here what we are going to do is that we will try to multiply the numbers list by 3 and let's see what actually happens so you simply type in numbers star 3 or numbers multiplied by 3 and let's save the code and run the code to see what happens so as you could see if you run the code you actually have the numbers 1 printed out 15 times and that is because you have the list which is 1 5 times and if you actually multiply this list by 3 it is essentially going to print the list itself by 3 so in this case we will have 15 ones in our result so essentially when you multiply a list by a particular number it is going to replicate that list that many number of times so 
that was another operation with lists now one more important operation or the most crucial operation in lists is to basically check if a particular item is present in the list so in order to learn that we are going to create a new list which is called as fruits so let's say we want to store a bunch of fruits in our list so you type in fruits equals and in this list let's specify a few fruits so let's say we have apple here as our first fruit then let's say we have the next one as mango give a comma let's add another one as let's say peach so right now we have three fruits in our list so once you have this list we could go ahead and now let's say you want to check if a particular fruit is present in your fruit list so in that case what you could do is that you could go ahead and you obviously want to print out the result so in print what we do in order to make sure that if a particular fruit is present in double quotes we type the item in the list which is in this case let's say you want to check if apple is actually present in the list so you type apple in and after in you specify the name of the list which is fruits in this case so what this is going to check is that it is going to check if apple is present in fruits so if we save the code and if you run it as you could see it returned us the value as true and the value is true because apple is actually present in fruits now what if we check for oranges over here so if we type orange over here and if you save it and if you run the code as you could see now we got the result as false and the reason for that is that orange is not actually present in our list which is called as fruits now what if we actually go ahead and simply add oranges right over here so we type in orange here we again save the code and if we run it as you could see this time we got the result as true because it is going to check if orange is present in fruits and it found that orange is actually present in the fruit list hence we got the value as true so by using this in what you could do is that you could check if a particular item is present in the list so this is one of the most uh, important thing related to list so that whenever you are writing some complex code and you want to check if a particular item is present in, in the list you could go ahead and you could check by using this in right here so that's it for this lecture and i hope you guys understood the python list operations so the very first list operation which we have studied in this lecture was to basically add a new item in our list by using the equal to sign or assignment operator then we have actually learned that we could actually go ahead and we could add list also we could multiply lists by any number and the third most important list operation which we have learned is to basically check if a particular item is present in our list or not so that's it for this lecture and in the next lecture we are going to learn some list functions so this was the lecture for list operations and in the next lecture, we will be learning some important list functions which will be more interesting than this. And those list functions are actually widely used when you make complex applications using Python. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.